What's up guys? This is episode five of my poker vlog. This video is from a 5-5 session I played at the Hustler Casino in Gardena, California. In addition to being home to my favorite poker live stream, it's also one of my favorite places to play when I'm in LA. As always, if you think I'm amazing or you think I suck, let me know in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you wanna see more poker adventures. I've got some pretty exciting things lined up that I'm psyched for. This session gets real crazy real fast, so what am I still talking for? Let's get it going. What's up guys? I'm on my way to LA right now for some work and some pleasure. I'm going to be playing a couple of sessions this weekend at the Hustler and the Bike and Commerce perhaps. It should be interesting. It should be a lot of fun. in Gardena around 2 p.m. for a little afternoon session. We're seated at a brand new 5-5 table. We pull out $1,000, that's the max in this game, not fully prepared for what's about to happen. We've only been playing about 10 minutes or so when we look down at the ace jack of clubs under the gun. We're itching to get involved, we bump it up to $20, which has been the standard open so far. It folds over to the small blind who tosses in another 15, and the big blind does the same, so we go three ways to the flop, which comes king 6-10 with two clubs we flop a royal flush draw. Both opponents check it over to us. There's no way we're checking here. With a hand this strong, we'd like to build a pot and also give ourselves the ability to win the hand if we do miss our draw. We bet 35. The small blind folds before we even put the bet out and the action is on the big blind. He doesn't seem as interested in folding. In fact, the big blind clicks it back over to us with a min raise to 70. In my experience, a min raise like this on the flop usually means one of two things. A, the big blind is incredibly strong and is trying to build a pot by making a raise we can basically never fold to, or B, our opponent is also on some kind of draw or semi-bluff and is using this bet to take over the betting lead and set up a play on the turn. The good news for us is, in the first case, we're still going to have a ton of equity with our monster draw, and if the big blind is on a similar draw, we're likely to be way ahead. We're not interested in handing over the betting lead either, we put in the 4 bet to 190. Our opponent doesn't seem phased by this, he looks down at the chips in front of him and realizes he has enough of those to put in a 5 bet to 400. Oh boy. At this point, our opponent's range is narrowed to only the strongest of holdings, the best case scenario, we're up against a similar combo draw hand like queen nine of clubs, but far more likely, our opponent is sitting on a strong two pair like king 10 or a set. I think our opponent would have re-raised before we flop with kings and likely even tens, so I'm strongly leaning towards king 10 or pocket sixes. Against two pair, we're looking at about 44% equity with our royal flush draw. Against a set of sixes or tens, we're still going to have about 34. With so much in the pot already, I'm not in the habit of folding royal flush draws. Calling is also suboptimal. If we put in the 400 and a club comes off on the turn, it's likely to kill the action. And if we do miss, our opponent is almost definitely going to jam and put us in a horrible spot. The best choice with our hand is to put our opponent in a horrible spot first. A six bet all in here represents enough strength that I think our opponent will have to consider laying down a hand like king 10 and pocket sixes won't be too happy either. After a little bit of thought, we do jam it in. All in. Our opponent doesn't think for long at all before making the call and we're off to a run out less than 15 minutes into the session with over 2,000 in the middle, hoping for a club or a queen to win it. The turn brings exactly what the doctor ordered. It's the three of clubs giving us the nuts. We just need to fade a board pairing card on the river. Unfortunately, we can't do it. The river is the king of spades. It's a terrible card. The only realistic hand we still beat is 10-6, but our opponent shows that he does have pocket sixes for the rivered full house. And just like that, we've dusted off $1,000 in record time. I'm moderately tilted, but still happy with the play. On top of that, we drove a half hour through LA traffic to get here and we're not leaving yet. I'm not we pull out a second thousand dollar bullet and sit back down. About a half hour goes by before we squeeze the 2 3 offsuit in the small blind. There's a ten dollar straddle under the gun and the low jack and cutoff limp in front of us. Obviously, not a great hand, but we can't get back to even if we don't play at all. We put in another five dollars and the big blind completes as well. The straddler checks his option, so we go five ways to a flop of nine jack deuce rainbow. We're first to act and check. 
The action checks around, so the dealer peels off a turn, which is the three of hearts, giving us bottom two pair. This is the hand we need to bet for both value and protection. We lead the turn for $30. Action folds over to the cutoff, who's cutting out raising chips, and he makes it 120. Our opponent is basically representing two pair or better with this raise, and I expect him to mix in some semi bluffs with a couple straight draws like queen 10 or ace 5, though I also expect he would have bet a hand like queen 10 in position on the flop when checked to him. It's also important to note this raise is a big one. In a spot where our opponent is risking a lot to win only a little, the math nerds will say we only have to call with the top end of our range. I don't think 2-3 is one of those hands, so we lay it down. Our opponent, however, does show the 6-2 offsuit for just bottom pair. We get bluffed in this hand, and we definitely won't forget it. Fortunately, seat 1 is very active and aggressive. I have a feeling we're going to run into this player again at some point. A couple orbits later, we look down at the ace nine of clubs in the hijack. With only folds in front of us, we open it up for 20. The button makes the call and the big blind calls too, so we go three ways to the flop, which comes out three, nine, 10 with two spades. The big blind checks, we check our middle pair, and the button slides out a bet of 35. The big blind quickly folds. We've got the perfect hand to just call, so we do, and the turn comes the nine of hearts. We check over to the button again, setting the trap, and the button takes the bait. This time he sizes up to 90. Once again, we like to call here fairly often. It seems like the button either has a hand like a 10 with a strong kicker or an overpair, or sometimes a bluff like Queen Jack. In both cases, we don't mind giving him a chance to fire the river, and depending on the card, we may be looking to check raise for value. We call, and the river is the eight of diamonds. It's not totally clean as Queen Jack makes a straight, but it's not terrible either. We check one more time with the plan to call down any wager, but the button checks back, so we turn over our ace nine, and that's good enough to take it down. It's maybe not as big a pot as we would have liked, but at least we get to put a tally in the win column. Just a couple hands later, we look down at a pair of snowmen under the gun. Certainly worth an open, we bump it up to 20. The hijack calls, the button calls, and both blinds decide to come along for the ride as well, so we go to a five-way flop, which comes out nine deuce three rainbow. The blinds check it over to us. With just one over card, this is almost as good as it gets for our hand. We put out $50. The players behind us let it go, as does the small blind, but the big blind does want to see another card, so he makes the call, and the turn comes to seven of clubs. Our opponent checks to us once again. Even though the seven is another under card, it's still very possible the big blind has a nine. We don't expect to be able to get him off that, so we check behind for pot control. The river is the five of hearts, it should be a brick, and our opponent fires out $80. It's less than half the pot, and with missed flush and straight possibilities out there, we definitely can't fold for that amount. We put in the call, and the big blind shows nine seven offsuit for two pair, which is very much the best hand. The very next hand, we look down at ace 10 of spades in the big blind. The cutoff opens it up for 25, the button calls, and the small blind lets it go so the action is on us. Out of position with a suited ace, we're going to squeeze here a good portion of the time, but this isn't one of those. We decide to take a flop and protect our big blind calling range with a strong ace. The flop comes king 8 5 rainbow. We've got about as nothing as nothing gets, so we check, and surprisingly both the cutoff and button check as well. So we see a free turn card, which is the queen of diamonds. We pick up a gut shot straight draw, but we decide to check again. Lucky for us, neither opponent is interested in betting either, so we're going to a river, which is the miracle jack of hearts giving us Broadway. Now that we've got the nuts, we're not willing to risk letting this check around a third time. We put out 45. The cutoff looks interested, which has us interested. He thinks for a couple seconds before raising to 130. It's music to our ears. The button quickly folds and it's back on us. We've got only one play. We raise it up to 350, hoping for a call, but even better, the cutoff jams. I've got an inkling we may be looking at a chop, which he confirms. Mm -hmm. The cutoff turns over ace 10 as well, so despite all the river drama, we're chopping this one up. About another 20 minutes go by until we're on the button with ace deuce of hearts. The hijack opens for 15 and the cutoff calls. It's a textbook spot for a button squeeze with a suited ace. This time we three bet to 50. The blinds want no part of that, but the hijack makes the call and the button mumbles something to himself, probably about these damn kids ruining the game before folding. So we go heads up to the flop, which comes queen four nine with two hearts. The hijack checks in flow. We're going to continue a lot of flops in this spot and one with a flush draw certainly qualifies. So we put out 45. 
The hijack isn't giving up yet though. He makes the call, so we're off to a turn which is the deuce of clubs giving us a pair. The hijack checks again. We do have a sliver of showdown value now, but it's unlikely to be good given our opponent's call on the flop. If we want to take this one down, we're going to have to bet and continue representing the top of our range like aces, kings, and ace queen. We put out $100, and the hijack calls again. We're preparing to unleash a third shell on the river, but the river is the ace of clubs, completing the elusive backdoor two pair. The hijack checks a third time. We were going to bluff, but now we don't have to. We put out 220. Looking back at it now, I think I would have liked to have gone with a bigger sizing, given that's a sizing we would likely want to use with our bluffs as well. No matter, the hijack is finally a believer. He folds, and we take it down. We're about two hours into the session when we pick up our first premium starting hand of the session, Ace King of Clubs in the Big Blind. Action folds all the way to the button, who opens for 15. The small blind throws in another 10 for the call, and the action is on us. Once again, it's a great spot for a squeeze, so we do to $55. The original razor on the button folds, but the small blind wants to play. He does make the call, and we go heads up to the flop, which is deuce, jack, queen, rainbow. The small blind checks to us. We have just ace high at the moment, but this is a flop that's going to favor our pre-flop 3-betting range heavily versus the small blind, so we continue for 50. The small blind nearly beats us into the pot with a call. We're not too thrilled to see that and we see a turn card, which is the eight of hearts. The small blind checks once again. We opt for a check this time, and the river is a very fortunate one. It's the 10 of diamonds, giving us our second ace high straight of the session. Our opponent checks to us a third time. We need to get some value now. We bet 140, a little under two thirds pot. Our opponent isn't too happy about it. He looks annoyed, but he does end up making the call. We show him the nuts, and he shakes his head and mucks. We pull in another healthy one. Since losing our first bullet in the blink of an eye, we're running pretty damn good. We've clawed and clawed and are now sitting on a stack of about 1800, just 200 away from even. Not too long later, we look down at pocket fives in the low jack. We open it up to $20 and only the big blind calls. The flop comes six king 10 rainbow. Our opponent checks to us. Once again, though we have a whole lot of nothing on this board, it's one that we should hit fairly often as the preflop raiser, so we see bet for 25. Our opponent is suspicious, he sticks in the call, and we take a turn which is the jack of clubs. It's not the best card as it connects with a lot of the hands our opponent may have floated the flop with, like say, ace queen or queen jack. Our opponent checks, we're fine to give up for the time being and see a river, which is one of two cards we really like. It's the five of spades. That's a bingo! <laughs> Is that the way you say it? That's a bingo. You just say bingo. Just as soon as we left the last time, we're back in Trip City. Even better, our opponent leads into us for 45. It's a small bet we need to raise to extract some more value. We make it 165, and our opponent thinks for a short while before putting in the call. Oh, they're on the river. We show him the bad news and scoop another one. We're running like the wind, and don't look now, it seems impossible, but with about 2100 in front of us, we're in the green for the first time today. I can't help but think of the quote about the little mouse who fell in a bucket of cream and struggled so hard that he eventually churned the cream into butter and walked out. I'm feeling a lot like a buttery mouse, I'm fired up and ready to win some more. We don't have much time to admire our stack though, the very next hand, we look down at ace 10 of spades under the gun plus one. I'm not filming just yet, but we raise it up to 20 and the low jack directly to our left quickly three bets to 65. This player joined the table about a half hour ago. He's only played a couple hands so far and it's the first aggressive action we've seen him take. I have a feeling he's strong, but when it folds back to us, we can't lay it down just yet. We make the call and go to a flop, which comes 10 deuce nine rainbow. We check it over to the low jack and he continuation bets for 75. Our opponent is representing an overpair with this bet, but with one of the best flops we could have hoped for, it's still too early to fold. We make the call in order to reevaluate on the turn, which comes a brick. Check again, and our opponent keeps his foot on the gas. He sizes up this time. He bets 175. We're really not happy to see this. We don't want to get pushed around, but with the way we've seen this player operate so far, I also don't think he's getting out of line very often here. Ultimately, we do decide to lay this one down. Only because I haven't made any good folds today yet. And he's nice enough to show us pocket jacks. We dodged a bullet. Knowing it's a good fold always helps ease the pain of giving up. 
A couple orbits go by before we look down at a big pair of our own, two kings on the button. Seat one is in the hijack. He and I have been by far the most active razors at the table. He makes it 20 to go and the cutoff calls. With our pocket kings, we three bet to 80. One of the perks of three betting early and often with a wide range of hands is, when we do have a monster, we're usually going to get action. Surprise, surprise, the hijack does make the call, as does the cutoff, so we've got a sizable pot already, going to a flop of 10-9-7 with two hearts. Both opponents check to us, with an overpair on a board that's wetter than water itself, we need to bet. We put out 135. The hijack in seat one calls, and the cutoff folds, so it's just the two of us to the turn, which is the nine of diamonds pairing the board. Now the hijack decides he wants the betting lead. He bets 200. It kind of looks like a blocker bet, as it's fairly small into a pot this size, just not sure raising makes much sense. This particular opponent is pretty aggressive and bluffy. There's a chance he's putting us on a hand exactly like the one we have and recognizes that this board is scary for us. If this is the case, I don't mind giving him a chance to hang himself on the river, so we do put in a call, and the river is the three of hearts, bringing in the flush. This slows our opponent down. He checks to us. I do think we could value bet here, especially as we do have the king of hearts, but we ultimately decide on a check and our kings are in fact the winner. I can't help but think we missed a bet, but at the same time, a re-raise all-in is a move this player is definitely capable of, and we really wouldn't have liked that at all. Not too long later, we get into it with the same opponent again. We look down at 6-5 of hearts in the hijack with an under-the-gun straddle. Under-the-gun plus one, our friend in seat one limps in, as does the low jack. That doesn't seem like quite enough, we bump it up to 50. The straddler calls behind us, plus one makes the call, and the low jack calls as well. So we go four ways to a flop, which comes queen five three rainbow. The action checks to us. Middle pair is almost good enough to bet four ways, but we decide to check in position and take a turn, which is the queen of diamonds, pairing the board and adding a backdoor flush draw. It's a good card for us, as it makes it significantly less likely any of our opponents hold a queen, a card which we were already behind. It checks to us again, this time, we need to bet to get some value and force over cards to fold. We put out 65, the straddler folds, and the action is on the plus one player, who thinks for a moment before raising to 300. The low jack wants no part of that, and the action is back on us. Once again, this raises a large one. It means we only have to continue with a narrower portion of our range. In this particular spot, we can have a number of trap pairs like aces, kings, or jacks, and even hands with queens in them as well. For this reason, I think we're okay to let 6-5 go, fully aware that our opponent may be bluffing this time, but we're going to have plenty of better hands to catch him in the act. This opponent and I have been chirping a bit all session. He first turns over the ace of diamonds, like suggesting right? he may have been semi-bluffing with the nut flush draw, Doesn't make it a bluff. before turning over the queen of clubs. Once again, we get the satisfaction of knowing we made a good laydown. We've played about five and a half hours at this point, we look at a couple more hands before deciding to rack up our mountain of yellow chips and take them to the window. What's up guys? We just played an insane session at the Hustler. I lost the first thousand dollar buy-in on like the third hand I played, but stuck around and were able to get it all back and even finish up a little bit on the day. Overall, it was an absolute roller coaster of a session for us. Usually, it's not a number I'd be psyched about, but all things considered, leaving with any profit at all today feels like a miracle. We're in for a total of two buy-ins, $1,000 each, and out for $2,133 for a modest win of about $130.